Here we're going to analyze a motion of an object down an inclined plane. So let's say we have this inclined plane with an angle theta and it is an object placed over here. Now we are taking a case where this angle of inclination of the inclined plane theta is less than the angle of repose. That means this object is not able to slide down on its own. We know that if the angle of repose is less than the angle of inclination, then the object would slide on its own. So when it is in this particular position, what are the various forces that come into play? We will analyze those and see what happens to the motion of this particular object placed on the inclined plane. So one force that we know comes into play is mg which is acting in downward direction, the weight of this block and then we have force perpendicular to the inclined plane which is a vertical component and then we have this horizontal component which comes into play which is responsible for taking the block down the inclined plane. If this is theta, this will turn out to be theta. We can prove it geometrically. So if this is theta, this component will be mg sine theta and the vertical component is mg cos theta. The normal reaction will be perpendicular. So this will be equal to r. So these are the various forces which come because of the weight of this object, or the weight of this block placed on the inclined plane. Now because theta is less than angle of repose, this block will not slide down. So we will have to apply a force onto this block. And let's say we apply a force at an angle alpha. So let us say we are applying a force at an angle on this block to take it down. So this is F. And this F will again have two components. Let's say we have this component along the inclined plane and we have a component perpendicular to the inclined plane. So let me, let me show those components again. So this is the component which is parallel to the inclined plane and this is a component perpendicular to the inclined plane. So if this angle is alpha, this will be F sine alpha and this will be F cos alpha. So we have got all the forces now and we will take equilibrium along the x-axis and the y-axis. We will assume that this block is in the verge of moving and down and we will say it is in equilibrium. It is neither moving down, neither going up, but it is on the verge of moving. So all the forces along y-axis will be equal, enough, equal to each other. They will cancel out each other. Similarly, all the forces, if we take the direction into account, will cancel out each other. So if we take along the y-axis, or perpendicular to the plane, then we have R and Mg cos theta and apart from that we have F sin alpha. So we can say that R plus F sin alpha is equal to Mg cos theta. Because they are opposite direction as we can see over here R and F sin alpha are acting in the same direction and Mg cos theta is opposite to that. Now, if we look at the various other forces which come into play along the horizontal axis, we have mg sin theta along this, we have f cos alpha in this direction and opposite to this moment, we will have the frictional force fs. So fs is acting in upward direction, f cos alpha and mg sin theta are acting in the downward direction. So fs will be equal to f cos alpha plus mg sin theta. So this is equation is along the x axis or parallel to the surface of the inclined plane. So we have to these two equations. Now we know fs is equal to mu r. So this will fs will be equal to mu into r is mg cos theta minus f sin alpha. This is from the first equation, R is mg cos theta minus f sin alpha. And if I put this value of fs in equation 1, I will get mu mg cos theta minus f sin alpha is equal to f cos alpha plus mg sin theta. So we have this, let me quickly 
talk about this again. So this is equation one, equation two. Then we took fs is equal to mu r, and I put this value of r from equation one over here, and I got equation for fs. I'll call this equation three, and I put the value of fs from equation three into equation two. So this particular value mu, I put in over here fs, and I get this equation four. So if I rewrite this entire equation, I'll get mu m g cos theta minus mu f sin alpha is equal to f cos alpha plus m g sin theta. And now I'll make f the subject of this equation. So I'll get mu m g cos theta minus m g sin theta is equal to f into cos alpha. Plus mu sine alpha, and I can write this as f is equal to f is equal to mu m g cos theta minus m g sine theta by f by cos alpha plus mu sine alpha. So I get this equation for the force F, which is required to push the object down the inclined plane. Now, for mu s, for this value of mu s or mu, if we take equal to tan theta s, where tan theta s is theta s is the angle of friction. This is the angle of friction. So then, I'll get f is equal to f is equal to mu is so I'll get mg tan theta s into cos theta minus mg sine theta divided by cos alpha plus tan theta s sine alpha. And this I can write as again. I can rearrange this and write as is equal to m g. I can take out common tan theta s can be written as sine theta s on cos theta s into cos theta minus m g sine theta cos alpha plus sine theta s divided by cos theta s. To sign on. So basically, this tan theta s has been put as sine theta and cos theta s. So f will now become equal to. As you can see, I can take cos theta s as the LCM in both the numerator and denominator. Therefore, cos theta s will get eliminated from the equation, and therefore the equation will take the form mg into. Sine theta s cos theta minus sine theta cos theta s divided by cos alpha cos theta s plus sine theta s sine alpha. And using the law of geometry, I can write this as equal to this is equal to m g into Sine of theta s minus theta, because sine a minus b is sine a cos b minus cos a sine b, and similarly the denominator can be written as cos of theta s minus alpha. So let me rewrite this again. Therefore, f equal to Write this equation is equal to m g sine of theta s minus theta and divided by cos of theta s minus alpha. So I come to this equation and I got this equation for force F required to 
push the object down the inclined plane. Now, for minimum f, if I want to f to be minimum, cos theta s minus alpha has to be maximum. That means the denominator has to be maximum. If the denominator is maximum, we will get the minimum value of it. Now, the maximum value of this denominator is cos theta s minus alpha is equal to 1 because that is the maximum value of cos theta. Therefore, theta s minus alpha has to be equal to 0 because cos 0 is 1 and therefore I can write down theta s is equal to alpha or alpha should be equal to theta s. So when we have alpha, the angle at which we are applying the force is equal to theta s, minimum force is required to push the object down. So if I put alpha is equal to theta s, the denominator will become equal to 1 and therefore f will be equal to mg into sine of theta s minus theta. So this is f minimum. Right, so we have obtained an equation for f. This is the equation that we wanted in terms of the angle of friction, the angle of inclination, the angle at which the force is to be applied. So we have to be clear about these three angles. Let me repeat once again. Alpha is the angle at which the force is applied. Let us go back to the diagram. Alpha is the angle at which the force is applied. Theta is the angle of inclination and theta s is the angle of friction. So we can use this equation to find out the force required to push an object down an inclined plane. Thank you.